Hey guys, Michael here. I'm going to be building a new personal computer for my family's main workstation, if you could call it that. We're coming off probably a six-year-old Dell computer, and this is my first attempt at building a personal computer. In this video, I'm going to show you the components that I chose and a brief explanation on why I chose them. So we'll start with the motherboard. Basically, the motherboard is the, the connection or the primary component that connects everything in your computer together. So you really want to get one that's uh, quality. You don't really want to cheat that on the motherboard. With that in mind, I basically chose this one because it was the least expensive uh, motherboard that supports the new architecture in the Socket 1336 for new Intel CPUs. It had good reviews, uh, good, if you want to call it that, good, good write-ups. So it's a pretty solid uh, thing, and I'm not really going to be using doing a lot of overclocking with this, so I don't need anything super crazy. Next up, we'll talk about the CPU that I chose. This is the Core i7 quad-core desktop uh, Nehalem chip from Intel. If you remember, I talked about um, the new Mac Pros and the lower N one that's only four core. This is actually the same CPU that's in uh, those new Mac Pros. So we know it's quality. I really wanted something that would last a long time. So this is 2.66 gigahertz core LGA 1366, 45 nanometer, eight megs of cache. Maybe I'll do a little bit of overclocking on this. Maybe bring it up to three gigahertz. It all depends. Jumping around, here's my RAM. This is OCZ high performance triple channel memory. These are two gigs of stick, so two times three is six gigs. Six gigs of DDR3 memory. I wanted, this was again, I was really going for cost. It had a good review and also had a pretty sweet price with a mail and rebate that I'll have to do as well. So this is PC10666. Again, two gigs of stick and it's looking like it's going to fit quite nicely in this new machine because I want this machine to run extremely well for the next several years. My graphics card. Originally I was just going to go with the GeForce GTX 2260, which is what this is. But I was exploring an NGET on a new egg right before I purchased and I realized that for the same price after mail and rebate, I could get the core 216 version. So several more cores, over 20 more cores on this for the same price. It's really nice. I'm not going to be I'm not necessarily doing a lot of gaming, but it's it's kind of nice to have uh, the upgraded graphics card. Again, just so you know, this was all purchased off Newegg, and I have to scrunch down a little bit uh, just so we can fit everything into the frame in case you were wondering. Now to power all this, you want to get a quality power supply. I went with the core with a CoreSource 650 watt power supply. CoreSource is a is one of the best names you, on the market that you can buy for power supplies, and I really do not suggest cheaping out on the power supply. You can go lower on the CPU maybe, or on the graphics card depending on your needs. But if you're not gonna, if the system isn't gonna get nice power, even power, and enough wattage, you're gonna have a lot of issues. Your system may not even run if you don't have enough power coming out of your uh, CP, uh, out of your power supply. So particularly if you're getting a power supply with your case, you want to make sure that you're going to at least have enough wattage for all the components that you're running. Otherwise, I would definitely recommend going with Corsar for your memory. And by memory, I mean power supply. Now, I did go with two OEM components. Most of these are retail, but these are two OEMs, so I could save a little bit of cash. This is just a standard OEM uh, SATA uh, DVD burner, if you will, and this over here is my Western Digital Green Caviar one terabyte uh, drive. So I, I could have, what I could have done was go with a Raptor drive for really fast performance, and then gone with a terabyte drive uh, that's a little bit less expensive uh, for all my data. But I wanted to have it all on one hard drive, and this Caviar drive will run quietly, efficiently, and it's one terabyte, so it'll be able to store all everything I need. The last thing OEM, I went with a System Builder copy of Windows Vista Home Premium 64-bit. If you're going to be going over 3 gigs of RAM, this is indeed 6, you're going to need to go for the 64-bit operating system, otherwise it's not going to work. So uh, let's just move around here to show you the components that won't fit. I'm not sure how I'm going to hold this up, but I went with the Antec 
uh, P182 Advanced Super Mid Tower for my case. I did that for two reasons. For it's it's pretty quiet and uses some special thing to keep all the noise inside, and it also separates the power supply and the motherboard and and uh, CPU. So you have two sections of your case separately cooled, so it's more so it's quieter and cooler, I guess. So that's an important thing. I'm just going to be recycling an old keyboard and mouse, so I don't have one of those. But I am going with a 24-inch Samsung LCD. Supports, supports uh, HDCP, so if I want to play Blu-ray or whatever on here, I have that option. Resolution is 1920 by 1200, so a little bit greater than 1080p. So those are just the components I chose. If you have any questions about what components you should choose, uh, feel free to comment me or email me at YouTube at uh, the revive one at gmail.com. When you're choosing components, I said what, what I did was I went and I knew I wanted to get this CPU. So I went out and then I got a motherboard that I knew supported it. Okay. From there, I got a graphics card that I knew would work with it and RAM. You need to make sure the RAM is the same as what will be supported on your motherboard. And then from there, you know, your DVD burner and your hard drive are pretty much standard. It's just an SATA connection, so you'll know that it'll work. So those are just the components that I chose for my new uh, system build.